guys welcome or welcome back to the channel i'm april honey today i'm going to be doing a highly requested video a lot of you guys have asked me many many times how to mod the switch so i am going to go through exactly how i mod the switch from beginning to end so you guys know exactly what to do so here i have a brand new unmodded untouched switch I am going to set up my camera and show you all of the step-by-step -step, what I do, how I set it up. Before we get started, I just want to note a couple of things. One, this is for Animal Crossing and Pokemon use only. I don't want um, anyone to get into any trouble. There's going to be no piracy involved. Nothing like that. Piracy is illegal, so we will not be doing anything like that, just so you know. And don't use this in any online competitive anything. This It's not fair. Just don't. And this is just for Animal Crossing and Pokemon use only. So, all right, let's get started. Okay, right off the bat, you're going to need a few things. You're going to need an, an unpatched low serial number switch. You're definitely going to need a data transfer cable, something like this, a USB to USB-C data transfer cable. You're going to need a jig. This is a jig. It goes into the arm of the switch, which the Joy-Con rail of the switch, which I will show you when we do need it. But you're definitely going to need this. I'll put links on Amazon for how to get most of these items. The unpatched switch you can go ahead and get off of eBay or from any local seller. And a micro SD card. You'll also need a micro SD card reader, possibly. If you plan on using FTP in order to transfer your files, then you should be okay without it. But it's always good to have a micro SD card reader. I actually have both. I use FTP to transfer island data, but then when it comes to the actual files, I stick it in my computer and I, I do it that way. And to set it up, I use a micro SD card reader in order to set up the actual switch. So that being said, you need a computer, a switch, a jig, a data transfer cable, a micro SD card, and a little micro SD card reader. Make sure that you have all of those things before you even try this or else you'll get really frustrated. Excuse my hands, they are a little bit shaky. You guys know I have a neuropathy. And even though I can move these last two fingers, I can't really move them well. And my fingers are very shaky, so just excuse that. Ignore it, if you will. Okay, so this is the NH Switch guide. It is um, basically a homebrew. It tells you what custom firmware, firmware is. Um, I don't really need to go into any of that. We're going to put a link to all of this down in the description so that you can get to it yourself. The first thing you wanna do is check your serial number. You can find your serial number right here on the bottom. Mine starts with an XAW100, and you can check your serial number down here. And mine is an XAW100, and the num next number is 4, which we know falls into the unpatched category, which is awesome, exactly what we need. But I did check that before I started this, before I even purchased it, I, I checked that. So if your switch is not patched, you're going to go ahead and continue. Continue to SD pre preparations, that's what we wanna do. And before we get to this, I'm gonna show you, we need to format our SD card. Okay, so you guys are gonna need two files. One is going to be the Tegra Explorer.bin file. You're going to need to download this and use it in order to format your SD card to FAT32. And then you're also going to need Tegra RCM GUI, which is going to, you're going to need the latest release. You're going to go ahead and you're going to download this to your computer as well. And this is what you're going to use as a payload injector. I am putting all of these files down in the description below so you can follow along with me. Okay, guys, you're going to need to put your switch in RCM mode. In order to do that, you go ahead and you slide this little jig here. 
down into the Joy-Con rail, the right Joy-Con rail. Make sure it's the right one. And then you're going to hit your power and your volume up button at the same time. Just hit them together and then let them go. Sorry, you know my hands, they don't be doing things like that. And then you're going to connect it to your data transfer cable. If you did this right, then your switch should not turn on. So see, that's how you know. If the screen stays black, then you are in RCM mode. So after you've downloaded those files, this is my desktop. We're going to open the Tegra RCM GUI file. We're gonna open the, the EXE file, which has two little Joy-Cons on it. So that's how you know what it is. Go ahead and open that. We're going to use that payload that we injected. You're gonna open and you're going to use that payload that you just downloaded. You're going to inject the payload and then your the changes you'll see on your switch. So when you inject the payload, it will tell you that it was injected okay. And then let's go to my switch. Okay, so if you did everything right, your switch is going to look like this. And you're gonna use these volume up and down buttons in order to um, select. We wanna partition the SD, use the power button to select. And then we wanna come all the way over to only FAT32 press the power button to select that. It's going to ask you, are you sure? Say yes, we do. And then it's going to start partitioning and formatting for you. Press any key to exit this. And then honestly, I would reboot it back to RCM mode. So select the volume down button to go down to reboot to RCM. And there you go. Let's go back to the computer now. So the next thing you're gonna wanna do is go to the home brew guide and you're gonna wanna download all of these files. Is I go ahead and I download the latest release of Hikate. We're going to go ahead and we're going to download it. You want this zip file right over here. And right away, I just kind of stick it on my desktop. So the next, thing you, the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take out your SD card and you're gonna stick it in your SD card reader and uh, stick it on your computer because we need to put the files that we're going to need for the mods on it right now. So as soon as that is done, go ahead and open the file folder for, your S, for the SD card that you put in. Unpack all of these, so go ahead and extract them all. So we're gonna extract all of these. We're just, um, I need to take all of these off because I, I have downloaded them in the past. So we're going to extract these. They're gonna go ahead and automatically populate on your desktop. And then I'm going to rename this because it can't have that um, one after it. If you happen to download it more than once, just take off the one or the automatic text that happens after the name. You can't really have that. So I'm gonna take all of these and I'm gonna set them to the side so they don't get in the way. I like a nice organized desktop, you guys know. Well, you guys know how I am. I organize my tools in Animal Crossing, so, you know, we're gonna organize our, our little thumbnails here on the desktop. We're gonna copy the bootloader file from Hakati into the root of the SD card as well. This, the Hakate file actually does need to stay on your computer, so make sure you put it somewhere that you're going to know how to get to it. And you'll found, find out why in just a minute. So there is a boot logos file here. It also has a bootloader file on it. Go ahead and drop that in. It should merge the two automatically, so you shouldn't have to worry about that. So we're going to open the bootloader folder. We're going to drop this Hikate IPL.ini file into the root of that folder. 
I'm going to put this off to the side so I know that I did that along with this one. So then you're going to come back to the original root folder. You're going to open this switch file. You're going to create a folder, create a new folder. You're going to name it App Store. It has to be named App Store. And then when you open that and put the App Store NRO in there. The very next thing you're going to do is you're going to take JKSV and put it in the switch folder. You're also going to take the FTPD file and put it in the switch folder. You're going to put the NX theme and the NX theme install NX shell, the NX theme and the NX shell files, and we're going to stick those in the switch folder as well. So the sysbot base, you're going to go ahead and open that. You're going to take the contents and you're going to drag it into the root of the SD card and it should merge with atmosphere. There should now be a contents folder. This is the file that contains sysbot base. So when you don't get worried that you see that, that is awesome. It's perfect. Everything is on your switch now. Okay, so your SD card should look like this. We're going to take it out of the computer now and um, put it back in our switch. So we're just going to take this SD card. We're gonna open the back of our switch. We're going to stick the SD card back in our switch. We should be all good. We should still be in RCM mode. We should still be in RCM mode. And then let me show you how to boot this for the very first time. Okay, so here we have our payloads from Tegra RCM GUI. Okay, from that point, you're going to want to find the payload, which is going to be on your desktop, but you're going to have to open this bin and go to your desktop and grab the payload from the Hikate file and select this Hikate CTCAER 6.1. Point zero dot bin file, you're going to inject that payload. This is the most recent payload from Hikate. So go ahead and inject this payload. Okay, after the payload is injected, I'm going to take you down to the switch so that I can show you what happens from there. Okay, so go ahead and put in the date. Um, it's March 25th, and then hit done, the NYX configuration was saved to the XD card. Okay, so this is a very, very important step. You have to do this. This is absolutely insanely important. The first thing you want to do is you want to go to your tools menu. We're going to create our backups. So these are going to be if your system ever bricks, if it crashes, if anything ever goes wrong and you need to grab your files, you definitely need to back this up. So you're going to select a backup EMMC right here and wait for it. It'll tell you when it's done. Close that. And then you want to use this EMMC raw GPP and you want to select that. It's going to check for available free space. The good news, because these take up a lot of space, the good news is that you don't have to keep this on your switch. Go ahead and we're going to take these files from the backup folder and we're going to place them on our PC so that they are safe. This takes a very long time. I'm not going to make you sit here for this, so I will get back to you as soon as it's done. Okay, so when that is all done, you're going to go ahead and you're going to hit close. I'm going to go here and I'm going to turn the power off on the switch. And I'm going to take the SD card out and I'm going to connect it to my computer right now. Literally an hour and a half has gone by, guys. So it does take quite a long time. It takes a lot of space on the SD card. So I do encourage you guys to make sure that you take this off of your SD card. So back on your computer, I inserted the SD card on my in my computer and I opened it up. And you'll see that it created a new backup folder. 
I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this folder right here and I'm going to put it somewhere safe on my computer where I'm going to know where it is in case anything happens to my switch. Hopefully you never have to use this file and it's totally fine, but just in case you're going to want to do this. Now this is a, quite a large file. It is 29 gigabytes. It's really big. So moving it over is going to take a little bit of time. So I'm going to get back to you as soon as it downloads. Okay, so when it, that is done, you're gonna go ahead and delete the backup folder from your SD card because you don't need it there anymore. You have it on your computer and it does take up a whole lot of space. Now, if you get a SD card that has 32 gigs or less, then this is going to happen in parts. So it'll be like one gig parts. It'll download a little bit and then you'll have to go back and take the SD card out, put it on your computer, then go back in and put it in RCM mood, reboot it, go through the whole process to back up again, and then it'll give you another gig and then so on and so forth. It takes a really long time doing that. So I do recommend getting an SD card that has more than 32 gigs. Once the back, backup file is deleted off of your SD card, open the bootloader folder and then open payloads. And then you want to stick the lockpick RCM file in there. I should have been done it in the very beginning, but I didn't. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to eject the SD card and put it back into our switch. Okay, we're in the home stretch, you guys. Once you have it back in your switch, you're gonna go ahead and put it, put your switch back in RCM mode. You're gonna inject the same payload that you did before. And then you're gonna go to payloads on your home screen and hit select this lockpick RCM. This is going to give you your switch's unique keys and we're gonna need these in case anything ever happens. It's gonna be added to your backup folder. So go ahead and on the top, you're gonna to have the option of dump from SysNand. Press the power button right there, which is over here. I knew that. And then this is going to be done. And then go ahead and go down to power off. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go down to power off. I usually like to reboot to CF to RCM, but power off works as well. Okay, so this is the last thing you guys. After you have taken those files and you put them down into your computer, then go ahead and inject the payload one last time. Now you can officially press the launch button and we're going to launch our system in CFW. Once you get to this screen, you can go ahead and take out the RCM jig and you can put your Joy-Con back on the switch, hit start, and there you go. I'll go ahead and go to the screen. I will go ahead and put up the gameplay screen on so you can, I can show you how to use this with Animal Crossing now. Okay, so we are currently on one of my old islands. I just um, transferred an old island that I had to my Switch already. And let's pick this up. The way that you connect this right here to the custom firmware. There's two different custom firmwares that you can use and they both serve different purposes. The one that I use for game play is called ACNH Poker. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that really quick just to show you guys. In ACNH Poker, you're going to see that you need to connect the software. The way you do that is you go to down to your Switch system settings go to the internet and look at your um, IP address on your switch. I am covering that up. So let me move myself really quick. Okay, so I have this is where you're going to find your IP address. That is what you're going to use to connect your switch. 
And I already have that selected as the IP address. So we're just gonna go ahead and we're going to connect. Go back into your game. And this is where it's fun. You see what's in my pockets right here. It's going to be what shows up. Actually, I'm connected to Grumpy. So let me change that really quick. And we wanna to connect to Cupcake. So there we are. We have what's in Cupcake's pockets right here. Anything that I want to put in my pockets, if I want to put something new in my pockets, then I can go ahead and put, we're going to use this baby bed because it's already on the list. So we'll go ahead and we'll add that here to our pockets. And there you go. And then you will see it shows up at the very end. And here you have our baby bed. So we're going to set this down right over here. And there you go. So that is how you use ACNH Poker. There's a whole lot of other functions that it does, but for the purposes of what most people use it for, that's how you use ACNH Poker. If you want something a little bit more comprehensive, I can do that in another video in the future. But for now, that is how to mod your Switch. Um, and yeah, so if you would like to load another island, which I'm going to do right now, as a matter of fact, if you would like to load another island, then all you need to do is um, get out first, get out of, get out of this island. We're going to save and we're going to end. Now I was working on this island, so I do want to save my progress so far and what I'm doing. So we're going to close this. And then you want to go down here to your album. You're going to go to JKSV. And you want to go to your device and Animal Crossing and load the island that you want. Now, I am going to back up this version of the island. So this was Cozy Cove. And I do want to um, back that up. So we're going to save over this really quick and then I'm going to put up this island which is a treasure island for my members and that is it. Um, that is the only thing that you need to do. You go ahead and you can restart your, switch, your island and you should be on another island when you come back on. Existing data, it'll always tell you this when you reload from your payloads. We're going to play as honey. Yes, the account was different. Yeah, that's fine. All of that. All of that is fine. So here we have the island, the next island that I wanted to load. And that is it. That's it. Okay, so that is it, you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I know you can be absolutely anywhere in the entire world and you chose to hang out with me. If you would like to see uh, further videos on how to use ACNH Poker or how to use the mobile spawner, please let me know. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.